Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here. Today was day two of the LEC season and that meant the second time that we're getting to see this new look G2 roster. Obviously with Reckless coming over and replacing Perks, this was a huge, huge story from the offseason uh, and it just has a ton of people absolutely hyped up and excited to really watch every single game uh, that this G2 team plays because we expect them to hopefully be uh, the best team in the LEC, kind of stomp through and play a ton of exciting games and really just kind of push the limits uh, of European and even Western League of Legends. Um, but also uh, to see if they can be one of the best teams in the world and just to, to see the kind of different crazy picks, plays that they're going to make every week. And also, uh, can anyone pull off a huge upset against them? Because anytime this G2 team loses, it's going to be an absolutely huge story. But they are really, really exciting. They're really fun to watch. And they're also huge trolls. And in this video today, we're going to be going over this G2 SK game that happened today. But also talking about the fact that G2... Uh, they kind of let Twitter pick their draft for them, which was also hilarious to watch uh, and really interesting to see how that played out. But before we get into that, I just want to mention real quick, if you're not already subscribed, definitely click that subscribe button really quick. It's fast, it's free, it's easy. Helps you guys stay up to date on all my latest content. We're trying to hit 6,200 subscribers as soon as we can. So I know you right now, you're probably not subscribed. You probably watch some of my videos. You see my stuff pop up on your homepage all the time, but you haven't subscribed yet for whatever reason. Click that button real quick and I would appreciate a ton. Also drop a like on this video. Uh, if you do enjoy it, if you like my content or you just want to support my channel, I would appreciate a ton. Helps me out that YouTube algorithm, getting us out to more and more people. Uh, so, with that being said, here we go. Let's get right into this. Um, so, this whole story starts uh, with G2 tweeting this out uh, this morning. They tweeted, since Twitter analysts are the biggest brains in the scene, what should we draft tonight? Uh, and, you know, that that's kind of the meme that Twitter, no matter what you do, they're going to say, they're going to tell you your draft was trash and that's why you lost and your coach sucks and you did blah, 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 wrong. It's Twitter. It's Reddit. This is what they do. Um, and, obviously, G2 loves to get involved with the community. They have a very very awesome twitter account they have a huge twitter presence um all their players are always popping off on twitter um so they put this out and the choices were uh soraka yumi bot lane sejuani ivern top and other uh as a comment i voted for sejuani um but i would have loved to see any of these i just think the yankos on sejuani meme is pretty funny um but obviously ivern top won out uh and a bunch of people just thought they were trolling and you know whatever but uh, it was going to be funny to see what they were actually able to do. And this just kind of gets people more involved. Because if G2 wouldn't have picked Ivern Top, uh, the community, you know, would have been able to spam in chat, tweet at them, uh, roast them everywhere. And that would have got a ton of more engagement and stuff. But also gets people tuned into their games to see exactly how the draft's going to go. And if they are able to pull it out. Because, uh, you know, they do stuff like this all the time. Sometimes uh, they actually follow up with it. Sometimes they don't. And then if they pick it and win, then Twitter, you know, is huge brain. Just like they said. And hopefully they'll let, uh, you know, Twitter do some more draft for them. And if they lose, then they just get the flame back on twitter it's just more more engagement more interaction g2 is just you know business marketing social media geniuses at this point doing an amazing job and that's really how they've got to be uh, obviously one of the best and most popular teams in the world and everything um and then obviously we go on to see that uh g2 would lock in the ivern top lane and we get to see the wonder ivern top uh with moonstone renewer staff of flowing water uh into uh the uh ardent sensor i can't remember the name of the item um and it's just hilarious and there's so many memes that come along with this. Uh, Wonder, first time in champions he's never played for, trying to learn stuff on stage. The LS, Moonstone Renewer, Staff of Flowing Water build. This picture uh, is just hilarious. Uh, and all this, the kind of insanity uh, that did ensue from this. Uh, this game was pretty interesting. It, it honestly started out pretty good for SK. We can kind of see the teams here. Uh, G2 has kind of an interesting team with obviously the Ivern in the top lane. Um, they have the Twisted Fate in mid. So their two solo laners don't really do much in the early game. Um, so they were going to have to scale up. But then obviously later, Later, um, the Ivern uh, being able to buff up the Graves and the Jin is going to be a really, really nasty late game comp. But uh, with like Leona and Hecarim, uh, SK is going to have an awesome opportunity to kind of snowball this game through the early game and maybe win that way. Uh, so this does start out with a play in the mid lane um, where they are actually able to take down Caps for first blood just as Twitch chat predicted as you can see on the bottom of the screen. Um, and then Yankos is able to get away uh, with the lantern from Mickey. But again, not a hot start for G2, not a hot start for Caps. They did fall behind a, a little bit at the beginning of this game. But then um, we go on to see a little bit later that G2 who tweets out this clip um, about their Swedish sniper um, where another fight breaks out in the mid game. This is a very, very chaotic, hectic game at the beginning. Um, Reckless on the gin, opening up the curtain call, looking for shots on two treats, and he does actually snipe him and take him down. Um, this fight would continue on a little bit longer as Jezu flashes away, but he gets rooted by the gin. Uh, thankfully for him, he has cleanse. He's able to get away with just a sliver of health, but obviously G2 even things up on the scoreboard, and this would be a very, very, very back and forth game, and honestly, SK would start to pull ahead with a pretty uh, sizable, pretty significant lead, but in the end, 
wonder on this Ivern would prove to be a bit too much. I mean, G2's comp once it got to the late game uh, was just really, really nasty. Uh, and even though G2, I, I think they were down like maybe two, 3,000 gold uh, at points in the mid game, maybe even a little bit more, they were able to fight back. Uh, and, and honestly, the Ivern comp did work out just like Twitch chat, or not even Twitch chat, just like Twitter uh, predicted. We can see the final scores for this game where it, in the end, G2 with a pretty convincing win, six and a half K gold lead. Um, and we see that Caps goes one, two, and 10. He's got his two Twisted Fate games two twisted fate games in so far which have both been awesome yankos with a deathless game on the graves reckless another deathless game 3 and 6 mickey kind of running it down but uh obviously the ivern top did pay off and they actually in the post game interview uh you know asked wonder about this uh and that was pretty uh hilarious as well we can check, take a look at this little interview clip really quick yeah i mean I, we saw that the xo they played a lot of these uh well these buff and chandler stop lane and since we played them uh, tomorrow then i just wanted to try it out and uh, i mean i thought what better time to try it out than on stage right so i kind of like experimented a bit on stage uh uh, and that's absolutely hilarious because again he says yes excel has been playing these top laners you know we've seen a little bit of like lulu and some other uh style champions we even saw another ivern top and these guys can work these things can be very very good when you have the right jungler mid laner 80 carry to be buffing up and again that moonstone renewer staff of flowing water uh combination is absolutely busted and that's why there's so many people talking about it uh on social media on reddit on the broadcast so many analysts and stuff talking about this um but like he said, this isn't something that they've really practiced. He wanted to, wanted to experiment on stage. He wanted to try it out. Uh, and I mean, it's not really that surprising because this is so G2, man. I, this is so Wonder, especially. Just stuff that they do. Um, you know, Wonder, the classic meme is that he doesn't even play the game very often. He did, You know, he, he isn't very practiced on a lot of these things. Uh, and obviously, uh, with the Twitter poll, with pulling out the Ivern top, which is already a meme, Wonder first timing on stage. So many memes going along with this. Uh, and like he said, they play Excel tomorrow. They want to know, kind of get inside the head of their game plan to see how these things play out uh, and maybe by playing this they can uh know the weakness of it know how to exploit this a little bit better uh when they play excel next or maybe even they'll pull it out head to head against excel and show them that they can beat them uh and and be a little bit better at their own play style than them but this was just absolutely hilarious uh and just the fact that it really shows the class of g2 to be able to pull something like this off and make it look so so clean uh with a comp that you know wasn't easy they they could have easily um gotten dismantled in the early game by sk because sk had a lot of powerful tools in the early game um with the the Leona with the misfortune, uh, with the Hecarim, and that game could have snowballed out of control. But G2 trusts themselves uh, to one be able to practice all these different kinds of comps and champions and stuff, which is something that will be so so useful to them in the future. Uh, obviously, when they go and play in tournaments, when they go and play in um, BL5s and stuff, and the drafts are gonna just you're gonna have to have so many different strategies, so many different kinds of drafts, but also just as the meta changes over the course of the year. Uh, and if this is something that people think is really good right now and is something that you want to be good at and be uh, well practiced at, being able to pull it out on stage and not only learn from it and practice it and get those kind of uh, different compositions down, but also to succeed uh, with it at the highest level and, and look pretty clean in the end. Yes, they did fall behind early, but man, two of your guys going deathless, um, just so much of your team looking so good. Uh, and right now, again, two games in, G2 has maybe not looked completely perfect, uh, but this looks like it's going to be a very, very tough team to beat in the LEC in 2021 and looks like they are really going to be uh, one of the best teams in the world. You don't want to overreact too early, but it's not like uh, so far anything that we've seen uh, tells us that Reckless is not going to fit in perfectly with this G2 team. Uh, they have so many crazy players, so many talented players, uh, probably uh, the best or second best player in every single position in the LEC. Um, and now they just have so many more options because they have the aggressive, crazy carry players. And then now they also have that reliable rock and reckless uh, to fall back and kind of be their insurance policy so they can get a little bit crazier. They can get a little bit more creative. They can get a little bit more inty as we know G2 has been known to do from time to time. And hopefully reckless will be the guy who's able to take a step back, uh, kind of not get involved in all the craziness. Uh, and I mean, it could come together really really nicely for this g2 team but again as i said they said thanks for the dub g2 army they did uh you know repay twitter for the draft that they were able to give to them uh, and i think this is absolutely hilarious i think uh more teams could maybe learn from this again it's tough for any other team other than g2 uh to be so confident in what they're gonna be able to play and also not care about the regular season if they win or lose because they know the playoffs is all that matters and they'll be able to bounce back no matter what um but also just to get this insane engagement on social media on twitter uh and it was just hilarious and i'm glad it worked out and i'm glad they actually picked um what the thing did this uh what the twitter poll did decide and i'm just going to be super super curious to see if they do uh continue to do uh, some more of this stuff in the future uh, and keep letting some fans decide because it, it is really just a great thing for the whole community it's super super funny especially uh when they're able to pull off the win and you know and this time maybe it was in in part 
thanks to Twitter. But that is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. What did you think about this whole situation? Do you think G2 picked it because Twitter? Do you think they were going to pick it anyway and it was just coincidence? Do you think they should do more of this in the future? Or do you think this is cringy and you hate it and they should stop? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions. Subscribe to update on my latest content. Let's get to 7K subs in 2021. Hopefully, I'll catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace.